All right, so now that we have an introduction to the video player, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new scene, um, completely empty, and show you how to do this from scratch. So I have my untitled scene here. It just has a main camera and a directional light in it. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add my video to my scene. This is pretty simple. I'm gonna go into my project and I'm gonna pick out which video I want. So in the last scene we did 2D Lookout 1. I think now I'll choose 2D Plaza. I'm gonna select that and I simply just drag and drop it into my hierarchy. And what that does is it automatically creates video player component on that game object. And that's because Unity can detect, okay, this is a video file. Uh, very likely the user wants to create a video player component. Um, now you could also do it by creating an empty game object and then selecting add component, then typing in video player, and then dragging the video clip that you want into this video clip field. Typically in Unity, there are about 10 different ways to do the same thing. I like to show the fastest way. All right, so now we have our video player component created. And I mentioned that we're gonna touch on these different render modes here. So right now, the render mode selected is just camera far plane. So that means that the video is going to render to the plane furthest from the camera. So when I hit play here, that's exactly what's happening. My video is all stretched out in its echo rectangular format and it is rendering to the farthest plane. And we know it's the furthest plane because I can go ahead and add in a 3D object. I'll just add in a little sphere. and then hit play again. Well, I'm supposed to be able to see my sphere. Oh, well, my sphere is at a very weird location. There we go. Um, so now my sphere is viewable. And then I hit play. I can see my sphere because the video is being rendered to the furthest plane. Uh, so that makes sense, right? And then let's go back to our uh, video player component. And if we set the render mode to camera near plane, even though we can see the sphere right now when we hit play, well, not, we won't be able to see the sphere because the video is then rendering to the plane that is the closest to the camera. All right, and now we also have this option um, to do a material override. So I'm gonna come back to render texture later um, and just skip ahead to this one. Um, and so this is what you would use if you wanna render a video to a specific material. So I already have this sphere in here. Let's just render the video to that sphere and see what that looks like. I just have to drag my sphere game object into that renderer field there. And by default, I want the material property to be the main the main texture there. All right, hit play and my video is going to play around the sphere. So that's actually kind of cool, right? Especially with 360 video, like why not play it onto a sphere? And you could do some really creative things with um, UI this way, like having having the videos maybe play back in a sphere. And um, when you want to actually go into the video, you can pick up the sphere and put it on your head, something like that. Um, of course, this isn't like really the best way to watch 360 video, but I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. All right, so let's get rid of that. And now let's create it the proper way. So as mentioned before, we want our render mode to be render texture. And we need to create a target texture to render the video to. So I have all of these uh, sample render textures here uh, included in the project uh, based on different aspect ratios for videos, but I'm gonna create a new one so that you know how to do that too. So I'm just gonna hit create here and find render texture, there it is. 
All right, so I'm in the process of creating my render texture. Let's name it um, test texture. And I'm just going to put that in the same folder as all of my other render textures for pure organizational purposes. And I see here, okay, so my texture is going to be 2D. It's not a 3D texture. It's just flat. It's a video. And now size. So this is where we need to specify the size of the video itself. And we can find that information by going to the videos in the project. There we go. <laughs> and all right, I have all of these import settings uh, about my video. And if I hit this button down here where it says 2D Plaza.mp4, I can go to source info. And now this is where I can find all of the information about my video. So it's 0.88 gigabytes. It is two minutes long. It is 4,691 frames, 30 frames per second. And here we go. The pixels is what I'm looking for. 3840 by 2160. All right, so that's the size that I want. So I'm going to go back to test texture. I'm going to do 3840 by 2160. OK, anti-aliasing set to none, color format. Let's find depth buffer. I actually don't want a depth buffer here, so I'm going to set that to no. Everything else, the default settings are fine. Okay, let's save the scene here. This as new video scene. Now I'm going to select my 2D plaza again, and I'm going to drag in my new render texture, test texture, to the target texture field. Now I'm going to select this test texture and show you that right now it is black but when I hit play we're gonna see the video mapping to the texture here there it goes so on play is when the video actually maps to that texture that's why sometimes the video scene itself will start out black now we have the texture working properly but it's still not playing back in our scene view or our game view and that's because we need to take this texture and we need to create a material from it. And that material is going to be applied to the sky box of our Unity scene. All right. So again, we have a few sample sky box materials for the different sizes. But I'm going to go ahead and create another one by selecting Create Material. All right, and now I get to choose my shader. And instead of using the standard shader, I'm going to open up the options. And I'm going to go to Skybox, and I'm going to select Pan Panoramic. All right, so here is where I drag in the texture that I want to use. It's going to be this test texture. All right, and just like that, the video uh, texture just popped in there so we can get a little preview. And I can rotate it how I like, up the exposure, what, whatever I want there. Um, and now this mapping is important. So latitude, longitude layout, that's what we're using in this example. But you might be using six frames. It doesn't quite work for the videos that I have. So for latitude, longitude, that's fine. And then image type, 360 degrees, yes. But you can also use 180 degree videos that's built into the shader. Now 3D layout, this is an important piece too. Uh, this video is just a 2D video. Um, I know that because it's labeled 2D Plaza, but also because there's only one view. So your eyes, both eyes are going to see the same video. Now in a 3D video, each eye is going to see a slightly different video stream because the left eye and the right eye have a little bit of spacing between them, right? So if I were doing a 3D video, I would go ahead and select the layout that I want. 
and actually let's let's take a look at what one of those looks like so my 3d skybox material let's look at the 3840 by 2161 it's using the over under layout okay and how did we know to use that well we can go look at one of our 3d videos here so 3d plaza i'll go ahead and play it okay so this is the way that it was rendered from the camera directly and this format was chosen from the camera um so it's pretty obvious this is the over under layout but side by side is another common layout for 360 videos okay so going back to new material here all right this looks good just going to rename material test material okay my material is ready to be added into my scene uh, there's a couple ways that I can add it to the scene, but the fastest way is to just drag it from my project folder and drop it into the scene view. And what that does is that um, if I pull open the lighting window by going window, lighting settings, is it sets this parameter here in my skybox, my skybox material parameter of my lighting settings. So this is how you set the skybox in here. All right. And now if I go back to my material itself. This is where it might be handy to figure out how I want it to rotate. I kind of want to be facing this way when I start. So that's what we'll do.